Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, are we visible? Are we audible? Can you type a yes on the chat box? Yes, we are audible. 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 Yes, If we're audible and we are visible to you, please type a yes in the chat box. Super, super, super. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mala. Yeah. For those who please click on start broadcast. Check. You can't hear me if you're not clicked on that. I I I've actually posted that, but I know, I know. You saw that. I saw that you posted it. But it, everybody's the yeses are coming, so it's gone down. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Good. We're seeing a lot of yeses anyway, so that's great. Right. We will just wait for maybe a couple of seconds, or uh, maybe uh, forty seconds or something, and then we start. Yeah. We, are, we I can see people are joining in, and we still have. Uh, I mean, it's still seven one only. So we'll just. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Good evening. Good evening. That's a very interesting name, Priscilla. I like it. And any Priscilla's any Edwis is one of my favorites. So good. All right, great. Good, good, good. Good, good evening. Uh, we'll just start in a couple of seconds. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, let more participants join us. Yep. So as we all know, today's uh, session is on careers related to biology. Career is beyond medicine. What all uh, can we consider if we have biology or if we are in love with biology? Oh, somebody said, please take my name. I'm sorry. I feel very like a movie <laughs> star right now. Ah, <laughs> I saw your message but didn't see your name. Say it. Write it again. <laughs> okay, Vanisha has um, issues with. If you have any issue with your um, with the video or audio, I will just request you to refresh. Or maybe close and re-log in again. Okay, when this is she did, but the screen is blank. Give it a couple of seconds. It could be a buffering thing. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So we have a lot of students as well as parents with yeah. us. Good evening, Sunita. Okay, great. Naman, hello, Naman. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So, uh, just a second. I think I think it's my. Okay, hang on. The chats have slowed down. We are still connected. Is there a buffering happening? Yeah, we're still connected. Yeah, we're still. No, connected. no, no. I, it's uh, uh, Shilpa. There is some lag with your network. So I can see your screen frozen. Okay, hold on. Let me try and just. Let me yeah, see. now it's fine. Oh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine now. You don't need to do anything. No, I'm. What I'm doing is there was it's a couple of uh, tabs uh, open. I'll just shut them. So. Right, right, right. So let me um, introduce everyone. Prachi okay, I think there is a lag from my end. Okay. All right, that's okay. Uh, well, we had a bad uh, thunderstorm here, yeah. and, and I think yeah. it's still raining here. Right, right. All right. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome again. My name is Vaishnavi. We have with us two panelists. Uh, let me introduce uh, both of these panelists, and then we can start off with our uh, discussion about careers related to biology. So, we have with us Miss Shilpa Singh, a coach with a flair for humor and storytelling. Shilpa is an instant hit among hundreds of students she passionately delivers career workshops to. Packing over 22 years of incredible work experience in career guidance, life coaching, HR management, and teacher training, Shilpa brings a holistic overview of the entire education and skill building spectrum from schools to organizations. Her youthful energy and bubbling enthusiasm is highly infectious and makes and makes learning a fun and a joy. We have with us Ms. Nilanjana Shree as well. She is the senior recruitment advisor for Trinity College Dublin, the University of Dublin, and is based in New Delhi. Nilanjana is armed with over a decade of experience in the international higher education sector. She spent nine years with London Metropolitan University, lies in Office India, 
where she joined as an office manager and worked her way up to the position of regional director in their SA part. Thereafter, she worked with Chopra Consultants as DGM Strategic Alliances and Partnerships. She holds a professional diploma in marketing from, a charter, from the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK and a bachelor's degree from Delhi University. We wel I welcome you both. Um, over to you, Shilpa. Let's start off with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nilanjana. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Sure. So, and always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thanks so much for that introduction, and Vaishnavi. Very kind of you. Good evening, everybody. Um, we're talking about a very exciting subject today, and I know you're at the moment you're also seeing the reflection of my laptop in my glasses. I'm very sorry about that also. Um, so, uh, what uh, what uh, what I'm very excited about today is is actually biology is one of my uh, favorite favorite subjects. It's uh, my biology teacher got me excited about biology because he had this little stamp that he used to put on when he finished correcting our papers or when he finished correcting an assignment. He would put a little stamp on it when we did a when we did a good job and he wrote biology is life. And I would laugh at that, but actually that's exactly what it is. It's uh, it is everything that is around us. Every single thing that is alive is is biology, and it is amazing. And so, when we think about biology and we think about biological sciences, usually the first connection that gets made is medicine. So, anybody who takes PCB in India as a subject combination, actually, the first thing everybody asks them is, "Oh, are you going to do? You know, you're going to do this because you wanted to become a doctor. You wanted to do medicine." Um, but and that's a lot of times. That is also um, what everybody is thinking about when they think about PCB. But what we want to talk about today is that there is, apart from medicine, just the most amazing array of areas that you can get into. And a biology student um, has just such an outstanding set of opportunities available to them. Okay, uh, from sectors you would you would assume would obviously require biology to other areas which might actually surprise you. And that's what we want to talk to you about today, is we want to talk to you about all the different areas that biology can lead you to, and all the exciting things that biology is about. Um, at the base level, like we said, biology is life. And so when you are able to understand the nuts and bolts of life, and you are able to understand the nuts and bolts of understanding what every structure, living structure is made of, the opportunities of where that application can be is humongous. Now, before I get into what the different career options are that you can look at, I want to underscore and underline the fact simply that when you look at any subject that you want to study right now, and I know I have students here from class 10 all the way to class 12 possibly, and I have parents on, on board as well, it's very, very important in today's day and age, not just because of COVID or anything else, but simply because of the fact that the way our world is evolving and the way that things are moving, um, it is extremely important for us to build very strong fundamentals in whatever subject it is that you choose. So if you have chosen PCB and you want to be able to stay connected to PCB, it is very important that you look at physics, chemistry, biology, build very strong fundamentals in that, all right? Because the application of where those subjects will be used is going to vary so much as you go forward in the future. Now, when I say the future, I don't mean 20 years down the line. I don't mean even 10 years down the line. I'm talking about um, five years, two years, three years. It's that the future is that the future is now. OK, so I'm using all sorts of cliches today, but the future is now. Now, uh, I've seen two questions. People ask questions related to whether biology requires math. So I am going to quickly touch that as well. And I, I know that the team, the MITRE team is online answering these questions. It depends on what area of biology you might want to come into in terms of either at a post-graduation level. It may be that you require elements of mathematics in that. But for the most part, most biolog biology related subjects do not have a requirement for mathematics. All right. However, as we go forward at this future that we're talking about, I would like you to be able to understand there is no way that biology will not interact with technology. It is doing so already. And so an understanding of technology and an understanding of how technology can be helped by biology or how technology can help biology in the other way is going to be critical for us to understand. We are going to be building 
uh, machines that like you already have something as simple as what's been used these days a great deal, which is where um, we do have something that's become very popular online that's gotten sold, which is the oximeter, where it, it is technology and engineering elements that are being used to measure the level of oxygen in your body. And because that's something that's being used every day now, people are buying that. All right. And so technology interacting with biology. You're going to have car seat belts that are going to measure heart rate for you to be able to and send that information out. Uh, body temperature, heart rate, pulse rate, to be able to send that information out real time to a doctor so that you are getting assistance. Um, that's going to be technology, biology at work. Um, your uh, Any element that you have when it comes to prosthetic skin uh, that can be developed, that is going to be used for people who have burn injuries or people that in, in, the, in, the, in the forefronts, on the front lines, where they get injured and they need to be able to have that support. That's something that's going to happen. Uh, the entire world that is working on and that is so excited right now about getting editing, gene editing, gene splicing, gene creation, um, being able to create and change genetic code is going to be something that's going to become more, more and more prevalent in terms of our conversations, not just from the perspective of understanding uh, how we can create, like a, 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 a remove a gene or switch off a gene for a disease, but even to the point of being able to understand um, would we, what is that? What is that impact in terms of longevity? How will we do that? What will be the content content when it comes to us being able to control and edit gene gene, gene structure to that level? So, <coughs> um, it's important for us to remember, therefore, that the fundamentals need to be important. Okay, um, so you need to be able to understand that there will be uh, there will be certain elements that you need to work on. Now, when we can, a lot of times, uh, biology students turn around and ask me. Uh, why is it that we need to take physics and chemistry? Uh, and my my uh, usual fun answer to that is because in the Indian education system, ek ke saath free. But um, the reason you also need best chemistry and, and physics is simple. That in order to understand the function of a biological entity, a life form, you also need to be able to understand how the chemicals that it ingests or the chemicals that it comes in contact with will impact it, um, how its movement how density of air, density of atmosphere, movement, velocity, all of those things also have an impact on each one of us, right? So therefore, the understanding of all three sciences is a requirement that will come when you have to be able to pursue anything in biology or biology related. So let's talk a little bit about what are the different areas, okay? So obviously you have medicine, which everybody is automatically associating with biology. Now medicine in India is an entrance exam based option and we give the NEET exam. And of course, we are then able to, based on certain ranking, get a particular college, and then you're able to study medicine. And at some point of time, post an MBBS, you do a specialization and you pick or a super specialization and you work in the, that's the allopathic side. It connected to that, of course, is alternative medicine as well. Um, so alternate medicine in India is areas like Siddha, Unani, Homeopathy, Ayurveda. And these are areas that are also valid areas and really strong areas of growth. Over the last four months, especially with the way that it's been in the pandemic, there is a joint effort of both our alternate medicines as well as allopathy working together to be able to try and find immunity boosting as well as immunity helping, not boosting, we don't need to boost our immunity, it causes more problems, but immunity building as well as uh, vaccine solutions. So we need to be, with the both are working in conjunction. So a lot of allopathic pharma companies working very hard to find solutions and also a lot of Ayurvedic companies also trying to be able to find help to be able to do that, right? Of course, in relation to that, there is also, so therefore the scope of being able to work in those areas very high. Um, Ayurvedic uh, specialties does not necessarily mean that you only have to become a doctor of Ayurveda. You could work with organizations that are in research. You could work with organizations that are creating products. Uh, you could work with organizations that create, uh, you know, that work on formulation of products uh, from from uh, from medicines uh, to um, creams to be able to look at maybe something that's pain relieving balms. It could be anything, all right, or foods also that are Ayurveda in, in, in essence. In relation to that is something called allied medicine. Now, when somebody is an ally, we'll break it down simply. When somebody is an ally, they're our friend, right? So allied medicine is an area that helps medicine do its job better. So areas like pathology, radiology, it helps a doctor understand the issue better. And so therefore, supporting areas of medicine. 
also super area to be able to explore with a PCB degree, with, with a PCB qualification. So these are areas that are too strongly connected. Now we can talk about biotechnology. Biotechnology is something that has been growing over the years. Initially in India, it was a slow start and it's kind of catching up and catching speed now. Um, it got and came into the news a lot more through Dolly and the cloned sheep and then the BT Brinjal. And now we have biotechnology in agriculture, a great deal to be able to have crops that can withstand uh, certain weather conditions or crops that can make sure that they survive for longer or that are, you know, that are able to handle and, and repel certain kinds of insects. So you're looking at, at biotechnology impacting them. Okay. Um, some of the areas that you're going to look at in biotechnology in the in when you're looking at areas like the IITs and water study there, you are going to require the PCM, but private universities and colleges and nationally, of course, will touch on this in much greater detail, will do admission in biotechnology through PCB as well. And when we're looking at that area, biotechnology is something we have all interacted with every day in our homes. You have an option and an example of biotechnology right now in your fridge. Your first interaction with biotechnology was with basically a simple thing as the heat or yogurt is biotechnology. Okay. Uh, what is biotechnology? It takes what is nature and changes it in some way to be able to be different or better, whichever way it is. All right. Now, let's look at food technology and agriculture, of course, open to you from PCB. Food technology and agriculture doesn't mean you go and you are cutting in a farm and you're picking. Um, it's about how is it that you're going to use uh, better food production techniques? Uh, how are we going to get more yield out of a particular crop? Um, how do we do any of those things related to ensuring that the agrarian base of our society is getting the best out of either their land or uh, the best nutrients into the land on what kind of product that, what kind of product or yield of, of, of is coming up okay uh, so food technology and agriculture come there um, and there of course I'm going to come from pure science I'll come uh, I'll, I'll come from food technology to an area called uh, food science I will come to nanotech don't worry um, food science so food science is what from uh, development of flavors so the fancy new chick uh, uh, chips that you're eating that have interesting flavors or a new new drink that you're drinking uh, that's a you know new flavor that's a food science kind of person who's coming up with those areas so it's all our research work related it's an understanding of chemistry understanding of biology understanding of being able to get into those areas and create those those flavors uh, forensic science in India still coming up a little bit um, very limited number of forensic scientists in India uh, but it's an area that is required. We actually have a deficit. We don't have enough forensic scientists. Uh, forensic science is not just what you see on television. It's definitely not CID. Okay. And it's not what you see on TV um, where everything gets solved in one, one episode. But it is about understanding how uh, when a crime has taken place or when somebody has passed away, what is it that happened to their bodies and what is it that took place. And uh, to be able to understand that. Uh, so there an understanding of physics becomes very important and understanding of chemistry becomes important because say for example it's um, I don't want to talk about gruesome things but if it's like a murder situation you have to understand which direction the blood splatter went in, uh, how forceful was it, what is it that happened. So the physics of it is going to be important. How a body has reacted to a particular chemical, chemistry becomes important. All right. So the, that is uh, that is what it is. So uh, Sharanya, uh, for your question, I repeat, uh, in certain situations, and we'll cover that in detail, in certain universities, you will require maths, but a lot of private places will not require you to have maths. They'll take you with PCB for biotech. Okay. Um, so uh, biotech for forensics, it's growing in India now. Now, let me talk about two other areas, environmental science and nanotechnology. I haven't covered yet. Neither have I talked about your research. Let's talk about those areas now. Environmental science is going to grow hugely as we go forward simply if you look around simply because climate change is a important area right and if we don't do something about it there's going to be a much bigger problem on our hands than than we are even in right now so the need for somebody who is passionate about the environment about conservation about sustainability is going to be the need of the hour as we go forward all right when you are looking at those areas it's important for you to remember that uh, PCB is going to be able to take you into studying environmental science and therefore then work in the sustainability space to be able to build 
uh, better. And, and, and people who have this PCB background won't be working only on one area of work. You could be working with architects, you could be working with city planners, you could be working with urban planners, you could be working with, um, you know, you could be working with figuring out on in just pure conservation work. All of those areas are going to be uh, areas that you can explore uh, when you are looking at sustainability. Uh, so important for you to understand that the application of what you will do will be across a lot of different areas. Let's talk about pure research. If I want to get into pure research, in India, the opportunities for pure research scientists are quite a few. There is an entire industry in India called clinical research outsourcing, where a lot of research from foreign as well as Indian clients is outsourced to India. All right. And Indian scientists work on the research related to that. What kind of scientists get hired in clinical research outsourcing or in pure science or pure research? from pure biologists, chemists, or physicists, in this case, pure zoologists or biologists, to biotechnology graduates, to nanotechnology postgraduates, all of these people, to bioinformatics people, and I'll come to that in a minute, they all get hired for you to be able to work in a pure research, all right? So uh, that is what you can do in pure research. Where does pure research have applicability? Pure research has applicability in drug development. Pure research has applicability in food science. Pure research has applicability. I'm not fat. I'm not being able to say the word right now. Also, um, in areas like sorry, uh, in areas like uh, immunology, epidemiology, finding cure for the vaccine. These are pure research scientists. Okay, and there has been more and more understanding of why we need pure researchers. Pure researchers because pure scientists because. Uh, these areas have been neglected and now more focus is coming in. Um, so these areas like immunology, epidemiology, virology are all going to grow as we go forward, right? And therefore, pure science is also a great space to look at. Now let's look at, um, let's look at what do I do after pure science? Say for example, I've done pure science in biology. What else can I do? Or I've done a pure science chemistry. What do I do? Now no, I want to talk about biological sciences, so I pick biology. I can then do a post graduation in nanotechnology and for nanotechnology to be able to be done, I need to be able to write, have a pure science as my undergrad. All right. When I do a pure science in my undergrad, I move to nanotech in nanotechnology. Where does nanotech get used? Everywhere. Nanotech gets used in your medicines. Nanotechnology gets used in your cream that you put on your face, nanotechnology gets used in the hair products and shampoos you use, nanotechnology gets used in the windshield of your car, nanotechnology gets used in your clothing, all these areas, and nanotechnology gets used even in your food, um, when you're looking at dehydrated food or you're looking at food that has certain flavor packets, etc. with it, all of that area uses nanotechnology. Nanotechnology applicability across industries, all right? Um, so when you do a post-graduation, and in India, for the most part, nanotech is offered at a post-graduation level. So it's an important thing for you to be able to look at. All right. Um, let's look at some of the other areas. And these were what I wanted to be able to talk about as well and and, uh, uh, and get those covered. So let's, let's look at the other space now. Let's look at some of the newer spaces that have opened up for us. So epidemiology, which is the hot topic right now. We're all talking about epidemics and pandemics and trying to study those. That is one area that has come up as a massive growth area, all right? When we're looking at genetic engineering, uh, genetic engineering, again, uh, mostly post-graduation level, especially we will come into deep dive on this, but genetic engineering from um, switching off certain genes to switching on certain genes to be able to uh, look at genetic code and understand how a, 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 a person is or a, a biological entity is created and what it's about is a great space to be able to look at. Um, there is a lot of lot of talk right now about CRISPR uh, and CRISPR-Cas9, which is the technology to be able to splice genes in the middle and change the code so that the body reacts differently, which has applications in being able to deal with things like the genetic predispensity for a particular disease to how a virus will interact with the body um, to what is it that it can mean when it comes to vaccines. So CRISPR is something that's come into the news a great deal, and there is a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of work that's being done there also. Uh, bioinformatics is the combination of mathematics with biology, so algorithms and computer science 
working with biology to be able to help epidemiologists and virologists understand how things will grow, how things will expand. So if I do, so when you looked at a lot of your um, charts that were there, the data scientists put out about what the what the COVID-19 structure will look like, like what, what the spikes will look like, when the likely spikes are, um, that was also bioinformatic scientists working together to be able to do that for you. So biomedical sciences is, again, combination of engineering, combination of biology to be able to find solutions, um, areas of 3D printing of organs, areas such as, uh, you know, uh, 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 3D printed skin, all of these areas, uh, understanding virus movement, all of these areas, again, with biomedical sciences and engineering. So the PCM, PCB uh, coming together. Shruti, you've asked the same question a lot. So yes, in order for you to have a, to become a psychiatrist, you will require a medical degree. Um, all right, and I think the partner just answered your question also. You will need to be a doctor and then you will specialize in the mind and the brain and then you will become a psychiatrist, okay? Uh, so yes, Vinay, bioinformatics, ideally you want to be able to have uh, uh, mathematics there because you need to be able to understand algorithms, but you can also work in the bioinformatics space to be able to work in the genetics space uh, to uh, an understand, a strong understanding of uh, biology as well. Astrobiology, what an interesting area to get into. So this is not just talking, astrobiology obviously has to do with the, 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 the stars and space and everything else. So it's understanding about life on this planet. It's about understanding on life about Earth on other planets. Um, it's also about understanding uh, how life evolved and what the possibly future of life would look like on our own planet. Um, astrobiologists will be the people who will entertain the idea of the fact that there could be extraterrestrials or life on other planets and what is it that we can do to be able to um, to be able to interact with them. They're not they're not out UFO hunting and but they are looking at the probability of life on other planets and what the what the structures of a particular planet or space would be like um, to be able to find out what what life can be like, what what kind of environment nurtures life. So to be able to study different planets and find that out. So combination goes there. But yes, an understanding of astronomy, physics will have to be a strong area that you would look at also. Wildlife conservation, again, a strong area to get into. If you're looking at biology, very strongly connected to environmental sciences. But wildlife conservation has its own space as well. Um, interestingly, in the, you know, in, the, in, the, in the civil services, the only area of the civil services, despite it being open to all streams, the only area that requires a science is the Indian Forest Service. They require you to be a science grad, a background in science before you, or a graduate of science before you can give the Indian Forest Service examination, right? Um, then that they are, they are the only service that requires science background because a lot of their work is related to conservation. A lot of their work is about protecting our national parks, about protecting our environment and habitat. So they require the science background. Okay, um, so astrology, yes, that and the uh, astrology and astrobiology very different. Astrology is uh, trying to figure out whether you are a Gemini or a, uh, or a, or a Virgo. Uh, astrobiology is figuring out whether there's life on another planet. So very, very different. Yes. Okay, so somebody is asking repeatedly about pay scales. Um, when you're looking at pure sciences or you're looking at areas related to pure sciences, starting salaries are not, are not going to be huge. What you are going to need to remember is in case when you grow in these sectors, uh, when you grow in these areas, depending on the kind of sector you choose to go to, whether you choose to go to pharma or you choose to go to agri sciences or you choose to go to bioinformatics in the newer age areas like epidemiology, etc., you will be able to look at uh, faster growth scales and faster salary scales increasing there. Um, and depending also on the type of organization. But again, I would urge everyone to be able to understand that if you are chasing excellence and you are being excellent at what you want to do and you are learning from multiple areas and not just focusing on one skill set then your chances of being able to understand and connect the dots and therefore open up areas for you to work in increase and the opportunities for you to be able to do more and earn more also go up okay so those areas uh, will be areas that you need to be able to understand, okay? 
Um, so the, that's that. That's it, what what I wanted to be able to talk about. I've seen a whole bunch of questions going back and forth. So I think uh, a, lot, a lot of people would have probably gotten an understanding or uh, got an answer there. Uh, Pratya, I'm sure your question would have got an answer. Would somebody please check out what Pratya's question was and answer that? Vaishnavi, over to you. Right. So uh, let's now, once we have idea about what these courses are, Let's now um, understand what are the subject requirements. How do you get into these courses? Now let's start off. I, uh, um, I'm back to the same slide. Let's uh, understand one by one what is the subject requirement and how do you actually get into this piece. So when you're looking at medicine and alternate medicine. Now when you look at medicine, medicine is basically your MBBS or something to do with allopathy. Now uh, whether you're looking at allopathy or you're looking at alternate medicine, which is your uh, Yunani, Ayurveda, homeopathy, uh, Siddha, etc. All of these uh, are basically based on NEET score. So you need to appear for your NEET exam and uh, whatever score you get, basis that you apply to different colleges and basis your counseling, you get your admission. So that is basically for whether you're looking at medicine, alternate medicine, BDS, which is dental surgery, uh, your veterinary sciences, which is your basically uh, doctor of animals. All of these will be dependent on your NEET score. Now, when you're looking at allied medicine, now allied medicine will uh, have areas like uh, pharmacy, will have areas like nursing, physiotherapy, occupational therapy. Now, these are the courses which are uh, university specific. So your admission will uh, be based on what university you are applying to. Uh, most of these universities will take you in basis their entrance examination and the admissions and the syllabus to which will be of this chemistry bio of class 11th as well as 12th. Now, when you're looking at psychology or home science, that is where, um, uh, again, your merit marks can vary or, or can be uh, taken into account or your entrance exam, depending on university. For example, if you're looking at, let's say, Delhi University, whether you are looking at home science, which is basically for dietics or uh, nutrition, um, or you're looking at psychology, you will be expected to submit your class 12 scores. And this is your class 12 course, you'll get your admission. Other universities, let's say any of the private universities, uh, will ask you to write an entrance exam. And once you clear that entrance exam, you get your admission. So uh, allied medicine is basically university specific. When you're looking at biotechnology, Shilpa just mentioned, so you have two ways of getting into biotechnology. One is BSc in biotechnology, which is a three-year course. And one is BSc in biotechnology. Now, looking at any of the IITs or MITs or triple IITs, these institutes will ask you to have PCM as your class 11th and 12th subject to study BTEC in biotech. The only reason for this is basically admission to these institutes will be uh, based on your JE main score. Now, for uh, to appear uh, for the JE main, you need to have this chemistry and mathematics. All the other private colleges, whether we are looking at um, uh, BIT, we are looking at VIT, we are looking at, let's say, um, something to do with Christ University, all of these universities have their own entrance exam and they accept students from bio side as well as uh, non bio side, which is the math side. So you can look at private universities if you want to study BTEC and biotech and if you don't have mathematics. On the other hand, when you're looking at BSc in biotechnology, uh, that is more research oriented. Uh, a lot of institutes have this course, uh, admission to which will be based on uh, university specific admission um, and examination, and they will expect you to have bio, physics, and um, chemistry in your class 11th and 12th. Now, nanotechnology is a newer field. Um, you will find very few colleges offering the, uh, this course at the undergrad level, but most of the good colleges will offer nanotechnology at the master's level, whether it's in India or outside India. Now, for nanotechnology, as I mentioned, depending on uh, whether you're doing a BTEC and tech or you're doing a MSc in nanotechnology, your subject combination will vary. But most colleges for nanotechnology will expect you to have some. Coming to something like agriculture. Now, agriculture is something uh, both cultural. Uh, Vaishnavi, there seems to be a connectivity issue happening. Hold, hold, hold. Vaishnavi, there's a connectivity issue. Is it just with me? Yes. Okay. 
hang, hang on. Is everybody else able to see and hear Vaishnavi? There was a connectivity issue. We missed you a little now, bit in the middle. Yes, uh, there was a connectivity issue. Vaishnavi, if you can repeat yourself. Yeah, you will need to be able to, I think, cover where were we at. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Nan yes. Nanotech, nanotech, nanotech you were talking about. Right, 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 right. So when you're looking at nanotechnology, a lot of good institutes will offer nanotechnology at the master's level. Uh, but yes, there are few colleges in India offering nanotech at the undergrad level. But yes, uh, most colleges will expect you to have mathematics with you and the admission to which will depend on what institute you are applying to. Um, now coming to something like agriculture. Now agriculture is a field now India is one of the largest number of universities or universities just of, of related to agriculture and food technology. Um, you have an exam uh, by the Council of Agriculture, which is ICAR, Indian Council of Agricultural Research. This is what subjects you have in that PCM. The questions will revolve around sciences. So you have BSc in food science, BSc in food technology. Um, again, if you're looking at Delhi University, you will be uh, admitted based on your class 12 marks. So again, dependent on what university you are applying to. When we are looking at sciences, so we have courses like BSc in Physiology, BSc in Biological Sciences, uh, BSc in Botany, Microbiology, Zoology, all of these uh, pathology, etc., etc. So all of these courses are central to class 12 marks. It will be done. biology. <clears throat> Forensic science um, is a course which um, Ashwaka mentioned is not that uh, prevalent in Indian universities, but yes, we have a very good institute uh, which is got, uh, Gujarat National Forensic Institute, uh, but it offers a course at the master's level. So you can be a medical student or a non-medical student. It, the eligibility says that you need to study a science related course uh, at your undergrad level to study forensic science at the master's level. Coming to something like environmental science and sustainability. Again, this is a course which you can study with PCM or PCB. A lot of colleges will have requirement of mathematics, but a lot of colleges are open to students who have PCB as a background. Now coming to the new age uh, careers, now we need to understand all of the, most of these new age careers um, are courses which are offered at the master's level, right from epidemiology to bioinformatics to wildlife conservation, which is more on marine biology to astrobiology. Now, if I look at specific requirement, epidemiology is a course or rather a career which requires you to have a research oriented skill. So you need to have your PhD or at least you need to be doing your PhD thesis around uh, epidemiology. So again, you have to have a career journey related to PCB. Uh, so maybe you can pursue something like a pure science course at the undergrad level and at the master's level and then move on to um, your PhD. Or you can look at uh, these institutes like IISC, ICERT, uh, which are basically famous for biological sciences courses if you're looking at Indian universities. Now, genetic engineering and biomedical engineering are two engineering disciplines which are offered by engineering institutes. Again, uh, major requirement is mathematics. But again, if you're looking at private institutes, they accept PCB students as well. But major colleges will expect you to have mathematics because you're getting into an engineering background. Now, bioinformatics is a course uh, which will require you to have both math and bio. So all the students who are looking at a career which expects you to have math and bio, you can look at bioinformatics. Um, something to do with astrobiology, I, I saw a lot of questions about whether mathematics is required. Yes, mathematics is required to study astrobiology. Again, it's a master's related course. So at the undergrad level, you can pursue something like a physics um, or something to do with bio. But make sure that you have your mathematics with you at least in class 12. And same go. Um, and when you're looking at wildlife conservation, it's more around, let's say, something to do with oceanography or marine biology, or something to do with your uh, Indian forest services. The requirement for which is to have a sciences 
uh, in class 11th and 12th so whether it's mathematics or bio depending on what is your inclination you can pursue something like that so this was all about basically your eligibility requirement um all the students who are looking at medicine as their uh, go to career as their main option i would um, request you all to have a backup option ready with you uh for the reason that we all know that um, if you look at medicine seats we have about 75000 seats in all and we have lakhs and lakhs of students applying for neat um exam so you can see the probability of uh clearing that exam and getting a good uh getting a good college or government college so have a backup option ready and when i say backup option don't think about a backup option when you have clear or you have uh, gotten your neat score and you are done with your counseling because ideally i'm um, uh, barring this year which is because of covid everything has been shifted has been postponed usually neat uh, um, results come out in june and by end of june is when you have your counseling so when you uh, are looking at institute um, uh, applying to institutes after your neat uh, results a very 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 few institutes are open and these institutes are either private or or a tier 2 or tier 3 colleges which are open for admission so i would request you when you are applying for neat exam and you are thinking about other institutes do apply to other courses do apply to other um, colleges uh, with your neat medicine score um so now closing this uh, let us invite a panelist who is um who will give us insights about what are the different courses offered by uh, trinity um, college dublin so nilanjana ma'am if you are ready we can start off with your uh, uh, discussion with your presentation i'll just open up that for you thank you vashnavi thank you right over to you ma'am i hope i'm very clearly audible i'm not turning yes. off here because of the connectivity thing no uh, problem good evening everyone i am nilanjana shin senior recruitment advisor for trinity college dublin and i'm here to talk to you about careers in biological sciences and how studying science at trinity can add a unique edge and acceleration to your career path Trinity is a research intensive university in the heart of Dublin city which is the capital of Ireland i noticed a lot of questions around research so i think uh, those of you will find um, trinity to be a very interesting option can you go back to the previous slide please yeah uh, but before telling you more about trinity i will provide a brief overview of ireland to give you an insight about the real post study career outcomes and also the abundance of industry interface which is available through projects internships and part time jobs during your journey as a student next slide please so ireland as you can see is a very small country both in size and population but it is also one which offers a very long tradition in education excellence as well as uh, offering an innovative and creative culture it is among the top 15 safest countries in the world and with brexit it is now the only english speaking country in the european union it offers a one year stay back or job search visa for students who wish to uh, who you know complete a bachelor's degree at an irish institution and want to stay back to find a job in the global job scenario that ireland offers next one please This slide presents the economic climate in Ireland which is the fastest growing economy in Europe due to the presence of over 1200 leading global companies that have substantial operations here a majority of them have their european headquarters here ICT financial services medical tech and biopharma are the key sectors of irish economy since today we are focusing on science related careers i will give you a quick peek about pharma and medical tech sectors Ireland is the top European country for international pharmaceutical investment. There are over 300 biotech, pharma and biopharma companies which are based in Ireland. We also have over 450 companies which are involved in developing, manufacturing and marketing medical devices. Majority of these medical tech companies based in Ireland have dedicated R&D facilities thus offering substantial 
employment opportunities for science graduates, science as well as engineering graduates. And in addition, it is the most entrepreneurial country in Europe after the US. So there is a lot of support available in terms of funding and mentorship for all kinds of startups or spin offs. Next one, please. Moving now to Ireland's capital city, Dublin, which is a young, friendly, cosmopolitan city. And it is like all European capital cities, it is very well connected. But it is also one of the best student cities in the world, offering a safe and stimulating experience as a UNESCO city of literature, while also being a global tech hub. Next one, please. Coming now to Trinity, which is one of the seven ancient universities of the world, along with Oxford and Cambridge. Next one, please. We are a 16th century university with 21st century knowledge. The old and new is evident with our campus buildings as well, where, wherein the old library here is a symbol of our legacy, while the science gallery stands for our modern identity of a research-centered, world-leading institution. Next one, please. This slide gives you a snapshot of our campuses, which are located in the Global Innovation Hub and surrounded by numerous corporate giants, which you can easily identify. Next one, please. Trinity has actively built on its tradition of academic excellence. And in our 428th year, we are ranked 101st in the world. Next one. Just some quick facts here. We are Ireland's top ranked and most innovative university. We are also the most entrepreneurial university in Europe for the fifth consecutive year. And we are ranked 92nd in the world for graduate employability. Next one, please. Trinity is the 17th most international university in the world, according to the Times Higher Education World University rankings. And we are a medium sized university with a student body of over 18,000 students from 120 countries. Next one, please. Since we were uh, discussing about research, I saw a lot of interest in research. So uh, Trinity has five major institutes and also has research centers. I'll show, show these in the next slide. Next one, please. Here you can see in particular that three of our five research institutes are related to biological and biomedical sciences. Next one, please. Two of our alumni in science have won Nobel Prizes. In 1951, we had Ernest Walton, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics. And just five years ago, in 2015, we had Professor William Campbell, who won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Professor Campbell is also the one who launched our new science undergraduate programs in 2017. Thus, we are proud to say that our programs are the result of the vision of a Nobel laureate. Next one, please. So this is the image that sums up an undergraduate science journey at Trinity. Students can enter one of the four science streams that we offer, biological and biomedical science, chemical science, geography and geoscience, or physical sciences. Typically, the first two years have larger class sizes. For example, biological and biomedical sciences have around 235 to 250 students, largely because it offers over 11 specializations. So in the first two years, students focus on a number of core subjects that will be the foundations of their later specializations in year three and four. So that is what the students decide at the end of second year. And in the third and fourth year, the class sizes shrink to much smaller as some specializations have as small a class size as just 15 students. During the summer months of third year, Many of our students seek summer internships or placements in labs in Ireland as well as overseas. And in the fourth and final year, they complete a large research component, which is a key requirement of that degree. I'll just talk about it in the next slide. So this is about the capstone project that every student at Trinity, irrespective of what they're studying, they have to complete it. And it accounts for over 30%, sorry, 40% of the final bachelor degree mark. 
It is an independent piece of research led by the student and supported by the, their supervisor, which is very similar to a mini thesis. And this opportunity of the Capstone project also allows our students to progress directly onto a PhD right after their undergraduate degree without the need for doing their masters. This is one of the core components of all programs that we offer. And um, like I mentioned, it accounts for one third of the final bachelor degree mark. And it gives the students an opportunity to put into personal practice the knowledge and skills that they would have acquired throughout the four years of their program. Also, this capstone project is extremely important from the point of view of your career outcomes because your prospective employers would look clearly and closely at your at the topic of your capstone project because that is your independent effort they would not be interested in your written exams or the coursework but it is the capstone project which determines the kind of employers who are going to be interested in your profile as well as the kind of job profiles and the starting salaries that are going to be offered to you so this is the project which determines your career path next one please before going forward I'll briefly talk about this new and extremely ambitious initiative at Trinity, which is called E3. It is a multi-million euros initiative, which has no precedent in the history of Ireland. And it is one of the few internationally as well. And can you go on to the next slide, please? And this E3 initiative covers engineering, emerging technologies, and environment. And it is. No, 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 wait. Uh, Rajana, is everybody oh. else? Uh, hold on. I think there is some issue. I mean, I think I can't hear her. I can't hear her either. Can somebody call her, please? Uh, do you have a number? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll yeah, just. Everybody that. hang on. Uh, uh, we seem to have a slight connectivity issue with Nilanjana, I think. Something's happened to where her, her mic is either cut out or she's has she has she gotten disconnected by any chance? Um, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of different areas and questions that we're asking. Uh, Nilanjana will cover um, is is going to cover the areas that you're asking about in terms of admission process, and we'll also be asking her questions. And um, you know, we'll be trying to get that information to you if you're looking at. Uh, we're trying to answer your questions as well. Uh, yes, I think uh, Gagana, the Trinity does cover STEM careers as well, most certainly. Um, <clears throat> that is also there. Um, so you just have to stay tuned. We're trying to cover all your questions for you. Are you uh, back, Nilanjana? OK, she got yeah. disconnected or what? Yeah, it seems like oh, I got disconnected. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're back. You're back. You were oh. in the middle of telling us about this, and you just suddenly cut out. Oh, okay. I think my mic got <clears throat> switched off on its own. Ah, cha cha Okay. So, oh, back to you. Back to you. Thank you. Sorry about it. So, we were talking about the E3 initiative, and it's a very exciting development at uh, Trinity, and it's a multi-million euros initiative, which is the first of its kind in the history of Ireland and among the first internationally. E3, the core aim of E3 is to revolutionize education by integrating engineering, technology and scientific expertise to efficiently address some of the grand challenges that the world faces, just as the COVID pandemic that we are all dealing with currently. Can we go on to the next slide, please? So this is a vision of E3, which is um, driven by state-of-the-art, world-class learning facilities, innovative research, and industry collaborations, which are the key drivers of E3. Next slide, please. So next, we move on to the career paths which a science degree offers. So as the slide tells you, approximately one third of our science graduates become professional scientists. They would be going on to research in academia, industry, or research organizations. Another one third use their scientific qualifications in teaching. So it would be a wide variety of careers that they would apply their qualification to. It would range from teaching to medicine to journalism, law, agriculture, or administration. And finally, one third move in a 
completely different direction from science while still using the transferable skills that they acquired during their degree. So uh, like I have mentioned earlier, Ireland is a home to the top biotech and pharma companies and also has a range of medical device companies based here, which offer a vast number of opportunities to our science graduates. Next one, please. These are our entry requirements. We have one intake in September for which the applications open one year in advance. That is on 1st October every year. Our entry requirements are 80% overall. And for science related programs, the four science streams, what we require is that you should have any two subjects out of physics, chemistry, bio, and maths. So it is possible without maths. So for example, if you're looking at biological and biomedical sciences, then you would of course need biology and one more science with it. Similarly, for physical sciences, you would need physics mandatorily and one more science with it, which could be maths or any other subject. For IB, we require 33 IB points for uh, admission to our science programs. And we need a total of six subjects, out of which three should be at grade five HL and three subjects at SL level with a grade four. In addition to the overall class 12 marks, we do not look at anything else, not your ninth, 10th, or 11 marks, but your final exam results. And in addition, you need an English language proficiency certificate, which could be either IELTS or TOEFL or Pearson. Given the unique uh, situation this year, we are also accepting Duolingo, but uh, we may or we may not accept it for the next year. Next one, please. So like I mentioned, we have one intake in September. And uh, once the applications open, you have to uh, apply simply by going on to the course page on the website. And you need to upload your documents. We need the predicted scores, your personal statement, two letters of recommendation, and an evidence of your English language proficiency. We give out conditional offers on the basis of your predicted results as well as your LORs, while your final scores and your English language test result can come later. Next one, please. Our tuition fee uh, for all lab-based STEM, uh, STEM programs, including sciences, engineering, and computer science is about 26,000 euros. These are four-year programs. And the estimated living cost is about 13,000 euros per year. Next one, please. Scholarships. We offer partial scholarships of 5,000 euros, which are competitive scholarships. So first, you have to apply and get a conditional offer. After that, you apply for scholarships, which uh, would be on the basis of academic merit. However, for biological and biomedical sciences, as well as geography and geosciences, both of these fall under the E3 initiative for which we have dedicated scholarships of 5,000 euros for every year of your bachelor degree, all four years. Next one, please. This is the E3 scholarship of excellence which is four to 5,000 every year. The process of application is similar. You first have to apply, get a conditional offer, and then you have to apply uh, separately. For that, we will need your offer letter and a brief statement of how you will contribute to the Trinity community. All scholarships are merit-based. And for E3 itself, we have over 500,000 available in funding to give out as scholarships. And for the next year, we have additional funding as well. That is it um, from my end. My name is Nilanjana, and this is my email address. I'm based in Delhi, so in case you have any questions, you can always get in touch with me. Otherwise, all the information is also mentioned on our website. Uh, all right, thank you so much, Nilanjana. So I think a lot of questions have already been answered, but I have two, three questions uh, with me, which you know students actually tend to ask. So one question, uh, which we uh, would want to know is what is the industry collaboration for um, students who are uh, enrolled in biomedical sciences or biological sciences? Okay, like I mentioned, in the third year, students work on internships, um, which could be either in Ireland or it could be outside of Ireland as well. So a lot of them go on to UK as well or anywhere, not just in Europe, they could go anywhere else as well. So from Trinity's point of view, in terms of how we support them, one is that we have a dedicated and award-winning career services, 
which conducts over mm -hmm. 400 workshops across the year to support the students with their career journey. And the career services supports the students not just with their post-study career outcomes, but also while they are a student, helping them with internships, both paid and unpaid, their summer jobs, all of that, that support is provided to them. And uh, it gives them the details of available vacancies. And also it conducts job fairs to provide the industry interface to the students. And in addition, Trinity is one of the few universities in the world which provide every student with a personal mentor across the four years of their journey with us. The mentor is a senior academic who is the go-to person for any academic, personal, or professional advice the student might need at any point. So giving the example of Indian students who have gone on to our biological and biomedical sciences programs, they have secured a research assistantship in their first year itself. So the opportunities are there, but we definitely expect the students to be proactive, work with the career services. But being a research intensive university within Trinity itself, there, are, there is an abundance of opportunity for students to find part time jobs, projects, as well as internships. Right, right. And uh, in addition to the mentorship, mm -hmm. uh, what other benefits and classes do you have? How do you uh, put them adjust there? So like I said, largely it is through the job fairs and a lot uh, depends on our industry collaboration. The Trinity is the recipient of large amount of research funding. Like I mentioned that it is an, a research intensive university, which means a lot of things. The first is that it is a research intensive in the sense that we are the only Irish university to be part of the prestigious LERU, which is League of European Research Universities. And uh, it has a bearing on the quality of our faculty, which who are all PhD scholars, and a majority of them are leaders in their field with outstanding and unmatched collaboration with the industry. So that is what determines the career path of our students, that if they go with a Trinity degree, along with their capstone project, then their career path is one which is they would be a highly sought after graduate, not just in Ireland, but across the world. Right. I think that was all um, from uh, our end. Anything uh, you want to add, Shilpa? No, um, I just want to. Right. Thank you so much, Dilanjana. Thank you so much, Shilpa. Uh, students, I. Uh, uh, I'm sure we have answered a lot of questions, but if you still have any question, you can of course write to us at hello at minder.com. You can visit our website, which is www.minder.com. Uh, we'll be happy to help. You can visit our career library page or blog. Um, I think we are good uh, uh, for now. Uh, we will see you again with the next topic very soon. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much, Nilanjana and Shilpa. Uh, for being here. Have a safe, e uh, good evening, everyone, and and be safe. Thank you so much. Thanks yes. very much. Thank you. Thank you very Bye much. Bye-bye. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. We'll see Bye. you soon.